this year we're hosting Blasphemous Frog Olympics here in wet and rainy Britain. An international quad-annual sporting event that will decide who has the better god than other ponscun foreigners taking part. Most nations will be represented, though once again the French restaurateurs will be hosting their own event called the Paralympics. And selected South American poison arrow frogs are banned for drug usage. It's not that they were taking them, but they were found guilty of touching other contestants and dishing out poison through the skins, even though they claim drug usage as a religious right and part of their fairy god's creation. Some years ago, the frogs of the world were flocked together in a contest of sporting prowess to see who could hop the fastest, jump the highest, croak the loudest, or submerge the longest, etc. However, it was noticed that some of the winning contestants insisted on thanking their fairy gods for making them the winner over all other fairy gods of the foreign ponscum worshipping sinners. This in turn incensed the other contestants who claimed that the winners had cheated by practising, and so this was not proof that their god was bigger, better or more inclined to favour an athlete any more than the next contestant. So it was decided to hold the blasphemous Frog Olympics to decide which fairy god was true and favoured, say, swimmers over lily pad distance jumping. In order for these to be true events, the contestants are banned from any form of practice and may only be trained by a certified expert in the unknowable supernatural that exists outside of known reality. This in itself seemed like the only fair way to decide once and for all if divine intervention would change the controversy surrounding those gods that chose to otherwise seem indifferent to say, well, world famine, disease or French frog abuse. This simple yet fair sounding piece of logic has not gone without its problems, however with followers of the Jewish fairies claiming victory and defeat thanks to their god being a cruel bastard. He dwells in generations of suffering before getting the promised gold medal and thus they can claim glory and defeat. Not practising has led to some rather amusing yet dangerous results, especially after a drowning in the swimming event that is considered an embarrassment to any frog. But as he, as he was a pagan fairy follower, most claim divine intervention anyway. The Buddhist fairy followers also claim victory and defeat, stating that they win through enlightenment and mental development, and only through loss and suffering can they find their true path as a loser. The Hindu fairy followers claim to simply be of a lower caste and look forward to a higher reincarnation in future gold-winning life. They also had the added problem of having so many different forms of the same gods to choose from that the victor would make a winner a negative influence with all the others. The Janus monk team caused particular disruption by turning up naked which upset the Islamic fairy followers whose dress code was so encumbering that even a god could not help them to victory or even point them in the right direction as their eyes became covered during the women's hopping events. An atheist amphibian secular group were disqualified for practising. They claimed that if practising religion was allowed then practising for the actual event would not be an advantage over supernatural powers. It was then pointed out that God had already intervened by supernaturally revealing in a dream to the event manager that they were disqualified. The yogic flying event never really took off the ground and has been cancelled this year with no member of any team qualifying for the event. Previous results have never been considered conclusive and the search goes on in this year's event. Mind you, I've got strong reason to believe that the Catholics may once again achieve gold, silver and bronze in the tadpole tickling and chasing events. 
So whoever and whatever god you may support, you can revel in the knowledge that all pond scum on earth have the respect and sporting glory that will be guarded by gods and no hard work, knowledge or training can cheapen your golden achievement. Praise be.